come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the sound of suspense. To the fear you can hear. Consider this. What is the nature of danger? Is it a clear threat to our safety? Or is it a murky product of our imagination? And what is safety? Do we ever really possess it? Isn't there always danger? Our tale is about a little old lady who ran from danger and was pursued by a cat. How did you get into this house? Now get... I didn't even touch you. What's the matter with you? Sooner or later, you're going to have to get out of my house. Don't you think I want to feed you? Because I'm not. There's nothing in the house to eat anyway. How in the world did you ever get in here? How am I going to get rid of you? Our mystery drama... The Resident was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Carmen Matthews. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. It's hard to live with danger. Hard if you're old, elderly. Hard if you're a woman. And hardest if you're alone. Miss Malvina Thrip is elderly, a woman, and alone. Oh, my. How many years since I lived in a place with stairs? Forty at the very least. How am I going to navigate up and down six, eight times a day at my age? Well, I wanted to get out of the city. And here I am. Oh, but it's a nice house. It really is a nice house. <laughs> what was that? Was that a cat? Didn't I hear a cat? I'm sure... All right, Malvina. You heard a cat. There's nothing surprising about hearing a cat. Nothing alarming. <laughs> the thing is that I... I haven't lived in the house since I was a child. It makes me feel very... Alone. Not that I'm not used to being alone. I, I, I like being alone. But in the city, there was always somebody around. Other tenants. Not necessarily anyone you'd want to know or, or even talk to. But, but you'd meet them maybe in the elevator and, and exchange a few words. <laughs> Not that I even knew their names or cared to. Also, there were the children at school. But I never knew what to say to them either. What I really liked was to talk to people on buses. Because sooner or later, one of us had to get off. <coughs> Quiet out there, cat. <coughs> cat, go away. <coughs> Honestly, cat, I will not let you in my house. Well, where are you? After all that racket, where are you? Cat? <coughs> Gone off to howl at somebody else. Well, good. All that meowing. <coughs> well... How in the world did you get in here? Did you skitter through the door without my seeing you? Now, nah, you're, you're a big cat, aren't you? Big yellow eyes. And you're sitting in my chair, you know that. My favorite wing chair. I'm probably getting cat hairs all over it. So, um, I think you'd better get down. Come on, cat. Get down. Get off my chair. Get... I didn't even touch you. What's the matter with you? Who could that be? Maybe somebody looking for you. I devoutly hope so. Mailman. Mail? For me? Nobody knows I'm here. I just moved in. One letter addressed to resident. You the resident of this house? Oh, I'm the resident, all right. As of this morning. Yeah. Here's your letter. Thank you. It says, Sam's Garage. Circular. Sam runs a good garage. I don't have a car. <laughs> Better luck next time. Uh, uh, Mr. Mailman. Yep? Do you know anybody who's lost a cat? Uh, you uh, found a cat? It's in my house. It doesn't want to leave. Crazy about you, huh? 
I wouldn't say that, no. Well, maybe if you leave the door open, you'll sort of wander out. Well, is that safe? To leave the door open? In this town? <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, it's good to hear that. <laughs> I had a cooperative apartment in the city. Every cent I had was invested in it, and I, I traded it for this house <laughs> to be safe. Everybody here was born here and is about to die here. I'll inquire around if anybody's lost a cat. Oh, thank you. I'd appreciate it. Oh, no. Leave it open, he said. <laughs> safe, he said. Well, now, cat... Anytime you're ready, the door is open. You can... Where are you? Where have you gone to? Are you still in this house? Looking for someone? Oh! You frightened me. The door was open. I, I left it open for the cat. You have a cat? No, no, I don't have a cat. It just showed up here a little while ago, and it didn't seem about to leave, so I... Did you, uh... Did you want something? Something in particular, Miss... Viola's my name. Viola. Hmm. What? I've forgotten. <laughs> oh, you have a little scratch on your arm. Well, the cat did that. What did you do to the cat? Well, I just wanted her to get out of my chair. Why did you? Well, it's my favorite chair. No wonder. It's nice. Oh, you uh, you don't want to sit in it. Yes, I do. Well, it has cat hairs all over it. <laughs> These old dungarees have been up against worse than cat hairs. Okay to drop my knapsack here? Oh, you live alone. I just moved in. This morning. I saw you. You did? I should think you'd want a nice cat living here with you. Well, I, I don't. Anyway, it seems to have disappeared. Maybe she went upstairs. You think so? I think it's possible. Well, I must go and have a look. Good idea. Uh, if you, um, if you want to be on your way now... Not quite yet. Do you, uh, Need some money? I, I have a little in the house, not much, but... I just want to sit here in this nice chair. You go ahead. Go upstairs. But I... I won't steal anything. Oh, I, I didn't mean to suggest... There's nothing to steal. Well, if you want to rest yourself... I do. I really do. Yes. Well, you rest yourself and I'll just look upstairs... Maybe I'll take a hot bath and change my clothes because I'm going out going for dinner. Out? There's no food in the house. I... I don't like leaving you here. You want me to come with you? Oh, no. No, I'll, I'll go by myself. Oh, wait. You forgot your letter. Oh, that's nothing. I guess it's yours. Resident. Is that you? What a nice name. My name is Malvina Thripp. Malvina Thrip. I think resident is a much nicer name. It could be anybody. Miss Viola, why don't you leave right now? Miss Thrip, I shall leave when I'm good and ready. Now go on upstairs. I really don't understand why I'm letting myself be subjected to all this. Uh, I'll, I'll be back shortly. <laughs> Oh, why, Miss Thrip? You were born to be subjected to all this and more. One bedroom door closed. You are a natural victim, Miss Thrip. Other door closed. Rest well, Miss Thrip. Pull the pretty pink and white afghan up around your shoulders and rest well. There's excitement in store for you. Ah, oh, there you are, my beautiful. Come here. Come. Come, Eva. Come to my arms. Oh, my beautiful evil one. She's lying down now, upstairs on her little white bed. She's staring at the ceiling, making plans. She'll stay up there for a while, so you and I must make our plans, too. Our careful, careful plans. Feeling 
better, Miss Tripp. You're still here. You've changed your clothes. What on earth are you doing? This is our dinner. I'm going out. I told Look, you... Look, a barbecued chicken and a bottle of wine. What on earth? I had them in my knapsack. On the road, I buy a chicken and a bottle of wine every day. Have a drumstick. I couldn't. Not hungry? Not a bit hungry. Oh. You pack up your chicken and your wine and your knapsack and you get out of my house. Miss Thripp, you sit down. Uh, sit down. You old fool. Now listen to me. You're a selfish old lady. Here you are with a little gem of a house, two bedrooms, and you won't even share a little corner of it. Well, it's my house. It's my house. Mine, mine, mine. What a way to talk. But it is my... Don't you know what it is to share? Why should I share my house with you? With anybody? If I don't want to... It's sharing I... that makes life beautiful, Miss Thripp. Don't you know that, for heaven's sake? No. Well, I... then you are going to learn. Here. Have some wine. Well, perhaps I'd better. Of course you'd better. There you are. Do you like me, Miss Thripp? Well, I, I'm sure you're a very nice girl, really, but don't you think you ought... I mean, do your parents know where you are, what you're doing? What are parents? Your, your father, your mother. Oh, my biological predecessors. Do, do they know what you're doing? Wandering about with a knapsack? Living off of chicken and wine? Let me fill your glass. I... They don't care. And I don't care. It's very strange. Only the very weak cling to their families. Well, I know I'm not strong, but on the other hand, I'm, I'm not weak either. I don't think I am. Wishy-washy. I've... I've supported myself. I, I've lived alone. I, I haven't complained. You call that being strong? Well, it isn't being weak. Anyway, I, I've never thought it was. You've endured, Miss Thripp. Strong people don't endure things. They change them. Well, they take things and they change them. I wouldn't know how to change, to take... If one way doesn't work, try another, that's how. The thing is, get what you want. Well, I want my house. I want my house. Take it. If you just go. Make me. If the cat would just go. If I could just have my house back again the way it was when I moved in. You want more chicken, Miss Thripp? Oh, no, no. It's the cat. She's back. <laughs> you like those bones, do you, my lovely? My evil. My beautiful evil. What did you call her? Eva. That's her name. How do you know what her name is? Because I just named her. Evil is a horrible name. No, it isn't. Think about it, Miss Thrift. Evil, spelled backwards, is live. Think about that. Evil, spelled backwards, is live. E-V-I-L. L-I-V-E. -E. The girl's right, no doubt about it. But wait. Take the same letters and mix them up again. And they spell vile. V-I-L-E. Think about that. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. I'm High Brown, producer of Radio Mystery Theater. And as you may imagine, I'm most enthusiastic about this new adventure in modern radio. Original thrillers seven times a week. How do you feel about it? We'd like to know your reactions to the return of radio drama. So right now, we're holding a weekly drawing. Fifty prizes a week will be awarded this week and next. Two AM FM stereophonos, two travel clock radios, and 46 anthologies of modern suspense. Just mail us your name and address, and you're eligible. Of course, we'd like knowing more about you as well, and how you feel about this new project of ours. But name and address will do it. To Mystery Theater, Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. That's Box 50, Radio City Station, New York, 119. Offer good everywhere, unless locally prohibited. This is WOR New York. Your station for the Mystery Theater. Now, shop right, there's the can-can selling. Shop 
proper brand of vegetables and can can. For quality that you can trust. For tasty corn asparagus, for peas and beans, that gourmet scenes, for beef that beat all other treats. The only vegetables that can compare at all with ShopRite brand are vegetables. You beat yourself instead of picking off our shelf. Now's the time to shop at ShopRite Can Can Blast. Now's the time to stock up while the value's left. Stock up on ShopRite soda, 10 12-ounce cans for 79 cents. ShopRite cutter French-style green beans, 5 15 and a half ounce cans for $1. Potatoes that will make the meal. And carrots that have bigger peel. Plus like the cash that makes the splash. Spinach that won't finish last. Now's the time to ask yourself the why day more. Now's the time to ShopRite now at ShopRite stores. Let's get back to the story of a lady living alone until a cat moved in, a cat named Evil, until a girl moved in named Viola, and the lady no longer lived alone. Wake up, Miss Tripp. It's morning. Time to wake up. What? Huh, where? What happened? You went to sleep on the couch, that's all. Why did I do that? Who are you? You know me. I'm Viola. Why are you holding that cat? <laughs> this is Evil. Evil slept upstairs with me on my bed. Your bed? Don't you remember anything at all? I, uh, I wanted the cat to get out of my house. And Evil wouldn't go, would you? You lovely thing. And then you walked into my house, a total stranger. I won't and... be a stranger for long. You can count on that. I want you to get out of my house. You and the cat, both of you. Can't you understand that? This is my house. Where's the telephone? I don't have a telephone. Why? Look at you. You've got my dress on. Why don't you have a telephone? How dare you put my dress on? My dungarees were dirty. Why don't you have a telephone? I haven't had one put in yet. Now I'll have to go out. You're leaving? I have to go out and get some food. We have to have breakfast, don't we? I don't care about breakfast. I want my house back. Miss Tripp, you really must. Stop being so selfish. I just want what belongs to me. That's not selfish. Listen, old lady. I'm going out, but I'll be back. Don't get any ideas in your foolish head that you can keep me out. I'll get the police. I'll tell them... Tell them a girl is in your house and a cat. Tell them they moved in and ate chicken and drank wine, and so did you till you fell asleep on the sofa. But... But it's true. Does it sound true? But... I'll show them. They'll see. I'll hide. Where? Where would you hide? Under the porch. Behind a bush. What? Up a tree. Uh, in the attic. In the cellar. Under the stairs. Oh, uh, I know how to hide. You've done this before. You've moved in on people before. I do it all the time. I have to live, don't I? Well, I've got to get going or we'll all starve. Please, take the cat with you. And leave you all alone. I want to be alone. It, it's what I'm used to. I'm off to the store. I won't forget you, Evo. I'll bring you something delicious. Be quiet, cat. I want to think. I'm afraid. That's what I am. Scared to death. <laughs> oh, I wish I had my little apartment back in the city. I loved it there. I, I, I really did. No use thinking about that. Those people have it now. They'd never let me have it again and, and take back this awful house. Why, you're purring, aren't you? Are you talking to me? What are you saying? Tell me. Oh, tell me. Because I'm not just frightened. I'm... I'm panicky. I don't know what to do. I don't want to do anything foolish and... When people are in a panic, they do do foolish things. Anything I did might be foolish. There's no use locking the door, is there? Or that, there's no use going to neighbors. They don't even know who I am. They've never seen me before. But neighbors. The police. Well, those are things I do in the city. Sensible things. Practical things. Not here, though. No, I'm... 
I'm in a strange place. In very strange circumstances. <laughs> You're a very extraordinary cat. I'm not going to pretend I like you. I couldn't fool you anyhow, could I? Of course I couldn't. But you're very unusual. I'm sure you're very wise, very knowing. You must know strange things, secret things that I don't know, couldn't possibly know. Evil things. Evil, spelled backwards, is live. And I want to live. And I can't live being afraid like this. Fear is an impossible thing to live with. So tell me, cat, tell me what to do. I'm sure you know. And I'll do whatever you say. I'm back. Where are you? You didn't go out, did you? You wouldn't be such a fool. We're in the kitchen. Well, there you are, the two of you. We're hungry. Well, I bought plenty. Eggs and butter and all that kind of stuff for breakfast, coffee, tea, and meat and vegetables for dinner enough for the whole week. The whole week? I don't want to keep going to the store. And for you, my lovely caviar. <laughs> Did you... Did you have enough money for all this? Of course not. I charged it. To, to me? To Miss Malvina Thripp. But... They... Didn't they say anything? They don't even know me. That's how small towns are. They just went ahead and, uh, and charged it. Mm. They'd never do that in the city. They gave me a couple of applications to fill out for charge accounts. I said I'd drop them by tomorrow. You'd better sign them. In the city... I always pay cash. You're not in the city now. Oh, I know, I know. So sign them. Huh. There. That fixes that. Viola, did you say... Did you tell them at the store that you were me? I said my name was Malvina Thripp, so I guess they thought I was Malvina Thripp. Uh, are you just going to sit there? Or are you going to fix us some breakfast? What should I fix? Well, I don't know about you, but I want grapefruit and fried eggs and toast. Oh, and open the caviar for the cat. Put the coffee on. And start the eggs. Uh, before the coffee's ready? And put the bread in the toaster. Well, I, I haven't unpacked the toaster. Well, then butter some bread. Uh, cut the grapefruit. There's no knife to cut the grapefruit. Oh, let's have a little efficiency around here. There's no frying pan. Hurry up! I can't. There, it's the butter, there's the bread. Now put the butter on the bread. Use your fingers. I... I can't understand why I'm doing all this. I am telling you to. There's no reason. And you like it. I don't. You like being told what to do. I hate it. All right, Miss Thripp. You may not like it now, but you'll get where you like it. Never. I won't. You'll get where you can't live without it, Miss Thripp. You just wait and see. You're a very passive person, Miss Thripp. And passive people need someone to tell them what to do. And then when they do it, they get a pat on the head and they are very, very happy. Is that how it is? That's how it is. To the end of time. The coffee's ready. People like you need people like me. I tell you what to do and you do it and that's what makes the world go around. Pour the coffee. <clears throat> very nice. Hot and strong. Mm, thank you. Pour yourself a cup. Thank you. I, I will. You're getting the hang of it. Of what? Of doing as you're told. Am I? Now, let's see. What will I have you do next? I'm not going to do anything next. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Oh! Oh, 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 you get out. You get out me. of my coffee all over my dress. It's not your dress. It's my dress. Oh. It's not your coffee. It's mine. And it's my kitchen and my house. Oh. And oh. One more word about your house and I'll slap you again. Now. I am going upstairs and change these clothes and put something on those burns. 
And when I come back, I want you to be in control of yourself. I can't possibly be in control of myself as long as you're in this house. You told me wrong, Kat. It didn't work. You told me to give in to her and do everything she wanted. And it didn't work at all. I don't think I want any more of your advice. She was asking me to be her servant. Pretty soon it would have been sweep the floor, scour the sink, take out the garbage. I'd be her personal slave for as long as she stayed here. Suppose she stayed forever. Suppose I never got my house back. Is that possible? Sooner or later, surely somebody would... Would what? Come to the door? Who? Oh, I wish I had friends. People who cared about me. And would miss me. And worry about me. I used to think I only needed someone to talk to now and then. And not for very long, but... That's not true now. I need someone close. Someone who cares. Well, what's this? Both of you asleep. What kind of a household are we running here? I just put my head down on the table for a minute. Dirty cups. Evil, get off the table. I said get off the table. Go lie down somewhere else. Okay, Miss Thrip. Wash the cups and then sweep the floor. Oh, uh, here's something else. What? My dungarees, they're filthy dirty. I've been traveling in them for weeks. What am I supposed to do with them? Wash them. What? You want me? Throw them in the washer-dryer. I don't have a washer-dryer. Everybody has a washer-dryer. And if I did, I wouldn't wash your dirty dungarees in it. Then you're just going to have to do them by hand. No. I am not going to wash them by hand. And I'm not going to wash your clothes, or buy your food, or cook your meals. We had an arrangement. You had an arrangement where you'd swagger around this house, my house, and give orders, and act as if you owned the place. And I would do what you told me. And that's the way it's going to be. It's not. That's the way it has to be, Miss Thrip. It can't. There are people who give orders and people who take them, and nobody in between. That's the way it is. That's the way it always has been. And that is the way it's going to be. Not in my house. Right here. In your house. Now, pick up those dungarees. You pick them up. Pick them up. And take them to the sink and wash them. Wash them yourself. And then put them on and get out of my house. Don't talk to me that way. You stupid old woman. I'll show you if I have to kill you. It's true what they say. Put two women in the same house, it never works out. Or am I being catty? I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Two women in the same kitchen, plus a cat. Teeth are bared. Claws are unsheathed. Fur flies. It's a cat fight. What else could it possibly be? Did she hurt you? My arms are bleeding. Your face is bleeding, too. And my hands. What got into her? I can't imagine. I thought she was asleep. Have you got some iodine? I I haven't unpacked it yet. Well, unpack it. I I wouldn't know where to look. Then give me some soap and water. Yes, that that will do just as well. I thought that damn cat liked me. Well, you can never tell with cats. Maybe she didn't like me, but she respected me. It is very hard to get respect from cats. As hard as getting them to like you. Oh, here's the water. And here's a towel. There's no soap. This water isn't very hard. Well, it's the best I can do. Oh. Well, that's enough. You can use it now. I don't need it. 
Why don't you need... Why, look at you. You haven't got a scratch. That cat didn't even touch you. But we were standing right together. She came between us. Why didn't she scratch you? Why just me? I, I wouldn't know. It couldn't be that she likes you. <laughs> no, I don't suppose so. Once in a very long while, a cat falls in love. Well, I've never heard of that. When a cat falls in love, it's disgusting. They lose everything that... that made them cats. Proud, beautiful animals, aloof, untouchable, sitting in the softest spots, staring at things no one else can see, thinking their secret thoughts. Why, the ancient Egyptians worshipped cats, kept them in temples, bowed down to them. They knew what cats are. The inscrutable, the unknowable. But when a cat falls in love, everything is changed. What happens, Viola? A cat becomes the lowest of the low. Shameless. Cringing, rubbing up against the person she loves, wanting to be touched, to be held. Not looking off into the distance anymore, only watching where the loved one moves. And when will he return to the cat who is waiting so patiently, loving and longing without dignity, without pride? It sounds sweet. It's sickening, I suppose. And that cat is in love with you. Oh, I, I don't think so. It, it, it isn't reasonable. That's why she came between us when she thought I might hurt you and she didn't scratch you. She only scratched me. She's in love with you. She's put me out of her mind and she's in love with you. Well, that settles that. We'll get rid of her. Uh, put her outside, you mean? What good would that do if she's in love with you? She'd get back in. No. We have to kill her. Kill her? Well, you couldn't do that. Have you got some poison? Poison? We'll put it in the caviar. But I, I don't have any poison. Why would I? A knife. Have... Give me a knife. Well, there isn't any knife. A poker, a shovel. I don't have any of those things. I'll strangle her. That's what I'll do. You better leave her alone. No, man, stay in my house. I don't hate you. She loves you. Viola, you don't mean that I should... Oh, no. No, I, I couldn't do that. I, I just couldn't. Pick her up. No, no, I... Pick her up. I... I... I can't do what you said. I can't strangle a cat. You didn't mean it, did you? We'll take her upstairs. And we'll throw her out the window. Come on. No, no, we can't do that. Uh, Nevertheless, it's what's going to be done. It's what you're going to do. Up the stairs now. I'm right behind you. Keep going. I I never wanted this cat in my house, but but that doesn't mean that I I wanted this. Keep going. Uh, in here. Oh, good. Uh, the window's open. Go ahead. Throw her out. I can't. I can't do it. Yes, you can. Just lean out and drop her. The doorbell. The doorbell. Come back here. Come back. Oh, it's a friend. It's a friend. Someone remembered. I'm coming. Come Wait. I'm coming. Another letter, Miss Rick. Oh, come in. Uh, this one's addressed to you. Oh, please. Please come in. I'm so glad to see you. Miss Malvina Thripp, it says... Nothing like hearing from a friend, is there? Listen, they're in the bedroom. Hmm? She's going to kill her. Uh, hold on now. Uh, Maybe she has already. She wanted me to do it, but I couldn't. What uh, bedroom is this, Miss Thrip? The front one. Top of the stairs. I look outside. Maybe she's there. Maybe she fell in a tree or a bush or something. Cat? Where are you? Are you all right, Cat? Oh, Please, be all right. I didn't want you in my house, but, but that was all. I never meant that you should... Oh, oh, where are you? Miss Tripp. 
Yes. Yes, I'm here. What... What did you find? Upstairs. Nobody. Nothing. Nobody? No cat? No cat. Wasn't there a girl? A young girl? Nobody. Nothing. Well, both of them couldn't have gone out the window. I... I don't think both of them... Look, Miss Tripp, you're all shook up. Why don't we go into the kitchen and I'll pour you some coffee? I, uh, I threw the coffee at her. There isn't any. Well, I'll make some fresh and you can tell me all about uh, the cat and the girl, the, 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 the whole dream. Uh, it wasn't a dream. Well, what if it was? Do you think it could have been a, a hallucination? Ooh, maybe something like that. You remember I told you there was a cat in my house. And I told you I'd inquire around about a lost cat, and I did. But uh, nobody's lost a cat. This girl, this Viola, she went and bought things at the store. Look, look, all these groceries. She bought them. I didn't. And caviar for the cat. She charged everything to me. You sure it wasn't you charged all these things? Well, I haven't been out of the house. What would I have done if you hadn't rung the bell? Viola was going to make me throw the cat out of the window. Uh, Miss Tripp, uh, uh, maybe I should call a doctor. Oh, I'll be all right now that you're here. You're my friend. You brought me a letter yesterday from Sam's garage, you remember? Address to resident. Yes, and I'm the resident here. I'm Malvina Thrip, and I'm the resident of this house. Sure you are. Although for a while there, I, I didn't know if I really was the resident of this house. Well, I wouldn't have taken the letter from you if I wasn't, would I? The resident means anybody who's living here. And I'm living here. I was at the time, and I am. Of course. Of course you are. You, uh, you don't think I'm out of my head, do you? Oh, not necessarily. You're uh, upset. <laughs> I'm going to call a doctor for you, eh? Well, there's no phone. I, I haven't had one put in yet. I'll go next door. Oh, don't go. Don't. Don't leave me. You don't believe me. You don't think there was any any cat here, or any girl, or that we ate chicken and, and drank wine and the cat ate the bones. And in the morning she came downstairs and she was holding the cat in her arms and I was on the couch. I'd been there all night. I think, I think I was drunk from the wine. Drunk, huh? Well, the bottle must be around here somewhere. Mm, I don't see it. And, and she told me to get breakfast. And wash the dishes, and then to sweep the floor, and wash her dungarees, her dirty dungarees. Look, look, there they are, her dirty, filthy dungarees. They're not yours? Well, you don't think I'd wear anything like that, do you? Oh, lots of women wear dungarees these days. Um, what was this girl wearing if she wasn't wearing the dungarees? My dress. Can you imagine? She was wearing my dress till I threw the coffee pot at her. Threw the coffee pot at her, did you? Yes. And the cat attacked her. You don't say. Not me. Just her. Uh-huh. And she said the cat was in love with me. Now, I don't know if that was true. If such a thing could be true. But she said it was. And she said in that case, we would have to kill the cat. Poison it. Or stab it. Or strangle it. But I couldn't do that. Of course not. Not, not any of those things. Then she said, we'd take the cat upstairs. And throw it out of the window. And that's where we were when you rang the front doorbell. And oh, was I glad. Hm. You, uh, you don't believe any of it, do you? Well, now, let's just say you've been through a lot. What was one thing and another? Oh, I have. Uh, what you need is something to calm you down. Well, I, I never take anything like that. Oh, just something mild to relax your nerves. I'll be all right. Now, uh, now that I have my house back. Uh, there's a very nice doctor who lives not far from here. He's on my mail route. I'll call him and ask him to stop over. Oh, please. Don't go. He'll fix you up fine. Hey, look what's coming up the walk. Yeah. Why, it's... Oh, cat. I'm so glad to see you. Careful. Don't let her in the house. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I've gotten sort of fond of her. And she's, well, 
She's rather fond of me. Oh, see. Almost forgot what it came by for. It got a letter for you. Another circular? Not Sam's garage again. Oh, no, no. Addressed to you, Miss Malvina Thrip. Well, for heaven's sake. It's from the city, my old address, where I used to live. Miss you already, do they? <laughs> well, I don't think anyone misses me. I, I didn't even tell anyone I was moving. Well, open the letter, why don't you? Imagine. My my hands are shaking. <laughs> Want me to do it for you? No. No, that's, that's all right. Why? It's from the people who took my apartment. The people who used to own this house. <laughs> I told you... We traded? <laughs> well, dear Miss Tripp, we hope you are enjoying the little house as much as we are enjoying your apartment. <laughs> One day soon, if it's all right with you, we want to drive up and see you. Well, and how you're getting along. <laughs> also to pick up our cat. We came away in such a hurry, she got left behind. Will you be kind enough to let her share your house until we can make arrangements? She's a dear, sweet thing. Her name is Viola. And we know you will love her as much as we do. Sweet Viola. Good Viola. Or is she vicious Viola? Violent Viola? Vile Viola? Hmm? Well, anyway, for the time being, Viola has a home with Miss Valvina Thrip, the resident. May they both rest safe and sound. I'll be back shortly. so much good in the worst of us, and so much bad in the best of us, it scarcely behooves any of us to talk about the rest of us. So the poet said, think about it. That's what I'm going to do. Our cast included Carmen Matthews, Joan Loring, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Now, a preview of our next tale. Out! Well, I thought he was... he was in for life. That's right. Four-time loser, they call it. According to the state laws, that's life. But because of his health, the doc called it uh, humane reasons or something. They'll parole him. And they have to get your approval, huh? That, that why they made you come? <laughs> something like that. They want me to be responsible for him. It's either that or die in prison. Oh, Phil. I told him. I told him. No. I wouldn't have him. Now, Phil, you know you're going to take him in. No, no, I'll never have him in my house. Let that jailbird die where he belongs. Let him die in prison. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>